Nearly a quarter of reward card holders have not redeemed any rewards over the past year, according to a creditcards.com survey. But not all redemptions are created equal. To discuss how to get the most bang for your points, we've got Michael Spellfogel, who is the Cardless co-founder and president. Michael, great to have you here on Yahoo Finance with us. So when you hear a stat like that, how can people kind of reverse the non-redemption that they may be doing? Well, first of all, thank you for having me today. I'm excited to be here. Credit card points are much like cash. They're depreciating assets. So as you earn them, you want to burn them. You want to spend them as quickly as possible because airlines are like central banks. They can print more points just like a bank can print more cash or, or a, com a country can. So you want to spend them as quickly as possible. And so with that in mind, as you kind of evaluate the card landscape right now and really look across the offers that are out there, is, is there a card that's knocking it out of their out of the park or even a card partnership that's knocking it out of the park knowing that it's typically the transaction service provider teaming up with one of the core maybe airline companies out there or core retail experiences out there right so you're referring to visa mastercard and amex those are the largest networks out there today um, and if you look at the big banks, right, um, one percent of U.S. GDP was spent on a Delta Amex card last year, just an immense uh, amount of transaction flow. Um, at Cardless, we help brands launch cards, too. Uh, some of our partners are Qatar Airways, Avianca, Latam, Tap Portugal. So we're bringing international brands into the U.S. and helping consumers get credit card rewards with those airlines, too. How can rewards points be an inflationary hedge for consumers out there that are looking for for smart spending and, and smart savings as well? Well, every time you buy something, you have an opportunity to earn some sort of reward. They're cashback cards, they're cards that earn credit card points, miles, et cetera. Um, and you really wanna be very tactical about the cards that you use. So uh, the best strategy I recommend is a diversified uh, one. So credit cards from big banks, Amex, Chase City, uh, maybe some more modern issuers, fintechs like Cardless too. If you have multiple cards at your disposal, you can really optimize it from the consumer's perspective. You know, there's there's even more of a digital engagement that companies have with consumers right now where they're saying, hey, just become part of our rewards program. And, you know, maybe you don't have to sign up for a card, but we'll make sure that you get points and you're able to track those points because we'll email you and let you know what your total is. And they're trying to drive even more of an entrenched relationship with that singular right. consumer versus that consumer going and getting a card and earning rewards elsewhere that they might rack up on a card, but less of that dollar share might go to a specific retailer. So how can consumers best evaluate when they are getting the best deal either from a specific retailer versus a card transaction provider? So from a consumer perspective, it's always best to think about, well, what are the underlying motivations of the brand of the company we're earning those rewards, cash back, those miles from? Um, and the brands want to earn wallet share, right? They want to win top of wallet. They want to get you to default to this airline, to this travel business, to this hotel chain. Um, and as a result, there's a lot of really lucrative opportunities out there right now, both to sign up for new cards, but just be members of the loyalty program where you earn outside of their universe, but bring credit card rewards back into it. And the best relationships are the ones that uh, people really trust the brands and the brands are able to go out of their way to provide benefits like elite status, upgrades, lounge passes, loyalty points um, in the in the airline world. And, and we've seen that develop really, really rapidly the last 12 to 18 months. How long should you be sitting on a, a trove of points or rewards points? Because a lot of people kind of look at their points and say, all right, I need to build it up to a certain level so I can cash in on something really large or be able to kind of keep a baseline of those rewards points. Is there a good threshold that you would say? Well, the stat might shock you, but the average cardless customer is redeeming their points within six months of earning them. So it's a pretty quick turnaround here. And I really recommend that earn and burn strategy. Of course, if you don't have any points, you need to accrue a balance so it's meaningful. But the second you can get a free trip, the second you can get uh, something that uh, you wouldn't otherwise be able to, I recommend redeeming them right away. This is a depreciating asset at the end of the day. Geez, putting me to shame on some of the cards points I've been saving <laughs> since 2011 here. Michael Spellfogel, Cardless co-founder and president, thanks so much for the time. Thanks for having me.